I need your indulgence, because this is important. We've come together this weekend to talk about the issues that we know are affecting our communities. We have a focus on the issues in the state of New York as Latino leaders and leaders who serve the Latino community in our respective fields. We care about and want to see better outcomes when we talk about education, housing, the reforms to the criminal justice system, the work that we have to do to make sure that we're counted in the 2020 census. All of the different workshops that you've been a part of touch on the various issues, the Yo Tambien movement, the, re the need for attention to educational outcomes, not just educational spending. The fact that we have a long way to go, we've come a long way, but we have no choice but to focus on the road ahead, and we have no time to really rest on any laurels about the gains made. And, we, and that becomes painfully obvious as we talk about all the things that are becoming important. I mentioned that because the task force is a place where we all come together. Somos is a platform for us to come together. But I only stand as a chairman because of the great work of the members that you saw in that welcome video. The members of the state legislature, the members of the Puerto Rican and Hispanic Task Force, who work every single day in their districts and in Albany to make change, positive change for the state of New York and the Latino community. I want to thank each and every one of those members. Let's give them a round of applause. Those members and so many of you as sponsors and supporters responded to the need in Puerto Rico. And last year, Somos, you know we do two conferences and the one in November was scheduled for Puerto Rico as always. And unfortunately we had to cancel. But you were all very generous. And the vast majority of our sponsors and registered guests said don't give me my money back. Let's give it to Puerto Rico. Let's donate those resources. Instead of having a conference, let's give it to Puerto Rico. And during our dinner last November, we raised a quarter of a million dollars, which were presented to Para la Naturaleza, a nature conservancy group. And in November, a, a group of us, led by our speaker, Carl Hasty, the members of the task force, the members of the board of Somos, we all went out to Puerto Rico. We volunteered for three days. We tried to get our hands dirty and, and do something to help somebody. No matter how small the task, we just needed to be a part of something. And yes, we presented a check for a quarter of a million dollars. But that's a, that is a drop in a bucket that's needed to respond to the needs of the people of Puerto Rico. Let's not forget that when Hurricane Maria hit the Caribbean, the Virgin Islands were devastated as well. Let's not forget that La Republica Dominicana had flooding throughout its communities as well. Let's not forget our brothers and sisters in Mexico at the same time dealing with the earthquake. Let's not forget the fires in California. Let's not forget the flooding in Houston, communities that have prominent Latino neighborhoods and residents. When we talk about overcoming the winds of adversity, we're talking about the winds of Hurricane Maria. We're also talking about the winds of Hurricane Trump and the horrible, disgusting rhetoric coming against Latinos at every turn. The fact that we were vilified from the beginning of the campaign and that everything this administration is doing is a defiance to everything that we bring to the table as Americans and as Latinos. The fact that Puerto Rico, American citizens treated like third class, and not even second class, third class citizens for far too long. We have to do something different. We have to come together in a different way. We can't just talk and give nice speeches. We have to do something that's going to change the course of our neighborhoods. It is time that we stop asking permission to be a part of the conversation, but begin to draw lines in the sand and demand that we get results for the issues that are needed for the people in our communities, for our children. We're spending billions of dollars in education. I don't want to hear that we can't afford to fully fund bilingual education in the state of New York. So, we have a lot of work to do, and we're going to continue to discuss the rest of this week and how we get there. But I also am so proud to be a New Yorker. I'm so proud of what New York State has done. I'm so proud of the members and every resident and every individual who did something to respond to all of those disasters. But there was someone in particular who stood head and shoulders above the rest who set a tone nationally for what Puerto Rico deserves. Someone who started that commitment towards Puerto Rico well before Hurricane Maria hit. 
when the, when the topic of conversation was the economic crisis affecting the island and the fact that Medicaid reimbursement rates in Puerto Rico, who have the highest utilization rate, have the lowest reimbursement rate, and they also have a cap that's unique to any state or territory. How insulting is that? This governor, the governor of the state of New York, said presente, he mobilized the entire team of the health department to go to Puerto Rico and see what can New York State do to fight for Puerto Rico's health care system. They brought the agriculture and market leadership to work with farmers in Puerto Rico to figure out how do we work together. And if you were with us, it's almost two years ago, you remember we cut the ribbon to the New York office in Puerto Rico, which was doing amazing work connecting New York businesses to Puerto Rico businesses and vice versa to share in our economic success. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you get things done. You don't just talk about it. Like when the president and other governors and other people say, we'll be there for those that need us. I call book on, on that. The fact is that in New York State, we led the response. The fact is that two days after the storm hit, while winds were still blowing, a plane was arriving in Puerto Rico, carrying the governor and, and workers, a continent of workers and supplies. It was our governor who led the way. It was our governor who responded first. It was our governor who used every private and public resource to say that Puerto Rico deserves better and that New York will not forget their contributions. And so we will be there for them in their worst of times. Ladies and gentlemen, I need you to give close attention to this important video before I bring up our honoree. Hurricane Maria slamming into the island. This is the worst I've ever seen. 3.5 million Americans. One official saying the island is destroyed. The pain on the island and the destruction on the island, that pain resonated all through New York. The love that came out of New York. The spontaneous outpouring of support was like nothing I've ever seen. Literally hundreds of containers filled with contributions going down to the island. 600 state personnel who stepped forward to go down to volunteer. 500 utility workers were in Puerto Rico.
speaker in those pictures actually doing some work, wasn't it? He had a nasty face when he was holding that rake, though, huh? It's been a long time. To my colleagues in the legislature, I want you to know that this New York State Legislature, the Somos Legislature, has passed more progressive legislation than any legislature since FDR. That's what this legislature has done. $15 minimum wage, paid family leave, marriage equality, universal pre-K, raise the age, closed more prisons than any administration in history, ended fingerprint for food stamps. Let's give them a round of applause. To all the VIPs who are here, and to our special guests who came all the way to New York, Anna Navarro. Let's give Anna Navarro a round of applause. It's a pleasure to be with Anna. I also need to apologize to Anna, because Anna works with my brother Christopher on CNN. And I don't know how many of you know my brother Christopher, but he is a very difficult personality. He is. We love each other. We love each other as family, but the truth matters, and he's very, very difficult. He always has been difficult, Anna. I don't want you to think it's just about you. You get an insight about him because he grew up here in Albany. Uh, we're not quite sure what happened to make him the way he is. We had a group in the mansion yesterday where he grew up, which is why I call him Mansion Boy, which he really hates. And there's a very large set of stairs, and at one point he fell down the flight of stairs, and he landed on his head at the end of the stairs, and we think that may be what happened, but we're not really sure. He was also a very skinny, sickly kid in school. He never got picked for any teams. He had no coordination. He was a terrible athlete. He had a sense of humor. He was a kind of funny looking guy. So maybe that's what it was. But I mean, the truth is, we don't really know what it was because he's adopted. He. So there's a whole big part of his life that we don't know. We didn't. Uh, find him actually, uh, somebody rang the doorbell uh, and we opened the door and there was a basket and he was in the basket and he was already 16 years old. So those things might have something to do with it. But your patience, uh, God bless you. Better you deal with him than I deal with him. Anna Navarro, you are a voice of truth and justice in this nation and we are honored to have you. Somos is stronger than ever, and thank God because we need Somos stronger than ever. Because what Assemblyman Crespo said is exactly right. We are in a battle for this nation's soul. That's what this is about. It is about the definition of America and who we are as Americans. And the federal government is very clear. They say, make America great again. The words themselves mean, take us back to a different time. And they want to take us way back. If they could, they would take us back to the time of the Mayflower. And the Puritans, that's their America, before all these immigrants came and made it complicated. First, you mean when the hypocrisy. Came in, right? The hypocrisy. Because if you're not a Navajo, or an Iroquois, or a Sioux, if you're not a Native American, you are an immigrant, and Donald Trump is not a Navajo, or an Apache, or a Sioux. But make no mistake, theirs is an anti-immigrant agenda that can't even be clear. And we believe in the exact opposite. We believe America is America because of immigrants. It's immigrants that built this country and made it what it is. They believe diversity is a weakness. We believe diversity is our key strength. 
We believe what our founding fathers said. E pluribus unum, out of many one. Invite them all to come. Every color skin, every religion, every creed, and we'll forge one place, one society. That's America, and that's what we're going to represent. Now, our, our obligation as a New York government is to show the actual differentiation to what that federal government is doing. And our agenda is very simple. It's justice for, for all, opportunity for all, discrimination of none. And that's what we're doing in this legislative session, and that's what we did last year. Leading the nation in saying we're a state of immigrants and we are proud of it. First office of new Americans ever created, thanks to Rosanna Rosado and Cesar Perales. Give them a round of applause. Helping people become new citizens. First Liberty Defense Project, where we provide attorneys to, pro to protect immigrants' rights against the government. First time ever. They've increased the attacks against immigrants, so we're going to increase the Liberty Defense Project. I announced tonight I propose another $5 million to the Liberty Defense Project. <laughs> Education is the key, right? The great promise of this country is we'll give you an education and you can rise to the top of your towns. We passed Excelsior scholarships because every child should be able to go to college and no child should be denied because their family can't afford it. And Speaker Carl Heasty is exactly right. The next step is to pass the DREAM Act because DACA dreamers are American dreamers and they're New York dreamers and we need a DREAM Act in New York. And Assemblyman Crespo is exactly right. Funding education equitably is everything. We spend more money per pupil in this state than any state in the United States. Double the national average. And I'm proud of it. But you know what I'm not proud of? Where the money goes. Left or right. Because the truth no. is there are two education systems in this state and in this country. One for the rich and one for the poor. Got it. And yes, we fund more per pupil. Not a problem. But the distribution is not equitable. And that's going to be the next frontier that we have to address. We give Buffalo a check. But there are 50 schools in Buffalo. And some are on one side of town, and some are on the other side of town. Well, what, where does the money go among those 50 schools? We don't even know. We give New York City a check for $10 billion. There are 1,600 schools in New York City. Some are on Park Avenue, some are in the South Bronx. How do they distribute the money? We don't even know. Well, my position is this, the money should follow the need, and where you have pupils who need more support, that's where the money should go. And we started it last year, we're going to finish it this year. We need equity in education funding, and we're not going to finish this budget until every city tells us where they're sending every dollar, and I want to make sure poor children get the education they deserve. Same thing with our criminal justice system. Right now, a judge sets bail to determine who gets out and who doesn't get out. Which means if you have money in your pocket and you can pay the bail, you walk. And if you don't have the money and you can't pay the bail, you sit in jail. That's not what justice is all about. It's supposed to be about merit, not money. And we want a bail system that has no cash attached. Let the judge make the decision on the merits. If the person is a danger to someone, they stay. If not,
not they're released, whether they're rich or poor, black or white, it doesn't matter. Justice is supposed to be blind. We still have discrimination in employment. We passed a $15 minimum wage, which is means a person doesn't have to choose between paying rent and paying for food anymore. We passed paid family leave. We passed minority job vouchers for young people that have employed thousands of young people. Governor President Ruben Diaz has done a fantastic job in the Bronx. Let's give him a round of applause. The highest MWBE goal in the United States, 30%. And this year we're going to make it even higher because we're going to say the state money that goes through the local governments should also have MWBE and that will increase it by billions of dollars and we're going to get that done this year. We still have discrimination in housing. 1949, this nation said, safe, clean, decent housing for every American. You have New Yorkers living in public housing with no heat, no hot water, maybe lead paint, they don't even know. And we tell those residents, it's going to take four years to get a new boy. Four years. Well, the residents of public housing just sued saying they don't want to wait four years for a new boiler. And you know what? I'm with the residents. It's obnoxious, it's wrong, it's a disgrace, and the residents of public housing deserve better. And ask yourself this, if the residents of the public housing complexes, if they were the powerful and the wealthy, do you think it would take four years to get a boiler or not? Ask yourself this, we have a situation in Rikers Island. 70% of the people on Rikers Island have been convicted of nothing. 90% are minority. It is the worst jail in the state of New York. Highest number of assaults, highest number of attacks, highest number of deaths. Rikers Island. So bad that the federal government came in and said it's an ongoing civil rights violation. The city has said it's going to take 10 years to build a new jail. 10 years. That's two mayors from now. I probably won't even be here in 10 years. 10 years to build a new jail. It's taking us five years to build LaGuardia Airport. It's taking us five years to build a new Tappan Zee Bridge. It took us one year to build Yankee Stadium. How the hell can it take you 10? And by the way, if it was the children of the wealthy who were sitting in Rikers Island, I'll bet you this, it wouldn't be 10 years to build the jail if they had the money and the wealth and the connections and the resources, and that's not justice. Last point is we know where the federal government is going. You just follow the dots. More ice raids than ever before. An assault on TPS, the rally in Charlottesville, where they said, well, there are good people on both sides. My friends, there is no good white supremacist by, by definition. They want to end health care for the poor. They're holding the dreamers hostage because Trump wants his wall. You know why he wants his wall? Not because it's border protection. If you were doing border protection, you'd get technology, you'd get lasers, you'd get lights, you'd get cameras. He wants the wall to vindicate his promise in the campaign. He wants the wall as a symbol that says we're keeping those people out. He said he wants a wall. We said we want a bridge. And he wants to deliver his wall. 
And those Democrats in Washington better stand up and not build his damn wall and not vindicate that division and his belief in America. And what they did in Puerto Rico, what they did in Puerto Rico is just another dot on that line. They abandoned the people of Puerto Rico. Pure and simple. They abandoned the people of Puerto Rico. They were not there before. They were not there the day of. They haven't been there since. And these are our Amer American brothers and sisters. But it doesn't fit their picture of the Mayflower. So they abandoned the people in Puerto Rico. Marcos Crespo and I and Nidia Velasquez first flight down to Puerto Rico the next day because we want them to know that New York stands with Puerto Rico.